Hey folks, it's Tony Fortunato from The Technology Firm. I'm going to walk you through a failover example that I'm doing with a client. It's uh, for me, new equipment, and he's got a configuration that I want to validate, make sure it's actually working. Obviously, we're not doing this on a live network, so I've got it here set up on the lab. It's kind of live. <laughs> You'll find out as we go through this. But um, anyway, so we're going to test that out. I want to go through the methodology, the results, what tools I use, and all that kind of jazz. I encourage you, if you have failover, if you have load balancing, anything like that, please test it out. How are you monitoring it? How do you check it? How are you alerted? And all that kind of stuff. Okay. So I'm going to take you right from the beginning all the way through the test methodology. For example, this is the laptop I'm using. Laptop has wired and wireless. I want to make sure the Wi-Fi doesn't kick in when the wired loses access to the internet. So we're going to disable the Wi-Fi card. And by the way, I have a remote session into this computer going through that router just for some added feedback, just to see how things look. So two ports are going to be port 8 and port 9. Eight's the primary. 9 is going to be the failover, the standby, whatever you want to call it. Uh, people, some active standby, that kind of thing. So 8 is the guy who's doing all the work right now. I don't care how you want to say it. Nine's the guy who's going to step in if 8 fails. So I'm going to use a tool here, HR Ping. I've written about this tons of times. I'm sure you've seen me use this before. I'm going to HR Ping, Google's public DNS, dash uppercase T. Means don't, um, means sorry, it's the time and date stamp. Lowercase dash T is don't stop, don't time out. And dash S1000 is a 1000 millisecond interval, which is one second. Okay. Now, if I didn't put that in there, the default for HR Ping is 500 milliseconds or half a second, which is just a little too granular, a little too chatty for me right now. One a second is, is going to do the job just fine. So the first thing we're going to do is. There you go. So I've started my pings. I can see this, the date, the time, so on and so on and so on. Very good. We're going to go to our router. This is the, um, I've SSH into it, so the CLI. And the first thing we're going to do is just review the actual status of load balance. And the load balance status says that eight is truly active and nine is in failover or standby mode. You'll see routing table and waiting and all that kind of garbage. We, we don't care about any of that right now. Okay, we're just leaving everything alone, leaving it on default just to see what happens. So now I want to confirm that my routing tables are cooperating with that. So show IP route and I can see my default route is via this network. Now just to take it one step further, trace route why not right enter off we go and we can see that indeed my first hop is that 206 210 awesome so life's good so from there what we need to do is disable port 8 right because port 8 is the primary right now so in ubiquity lingo we're going to go to configure mode in cisco it's configure terminal however you want to say it but anyways we're there so the command, it doesn't matter what the command is. Okay. Boom. And with Ubiquity, you have to run a command called commit that applies your change. And we'll pay attention to the background, uh, the pings. We'll see if anything fails and so on and so on and so on. So the background here uh, went gray because it's telling you the configuration has changed and the GUI knows that. So hit refresh. We don't care about that. And now you can see my remote session timed out and reconnected and I'm back up and running again. So right now what I'm going to do is hit control C and I see that I've lost zero packets. So even though I had a bit of a communication glitch on the way back in, everything's fine. So I did not miss one ping on the way out. All right. We're going to confirm everything by redoing what we just did a moment ago. I'm in configuration mode. There you go. Oh, I did not save my changes. That's fine. I'm being messy. That's fine. So I'm going to do my show low balance status again, or status, depending how you want to pronounce that. And we can see that 8 now is not active. It's inactive. And 9 is active. So it did exactly what we thought it was going to do. If I show my IP route, now I should see the default route is now there's nine right there and this one is inactive 
right? If I want to take it a step further, we'll do a trace route command. Good old Google public DNS. And you can see that I am indeed going out that other interface. So there you go. So everything worked just fine. Now we're going to do the, the inverse. All right. So we're going to enable that port. So I'm going to go back into configuration mode. And it's a real goofy command. It's just the way it is. What are you going to do? I'm going to hit enter. Okay. And I'm going to start a ping before I commit it. I also want to start a stopwatch. Why not? And I'm going to commit my changes. Okay. So now I'm waiting for some indication that this has failed over. I'm sorry, went back to the primary and the failover is no longer in effect. I'm waiting to see some sort of disconnect, some sort of maybe packet loss, some sort of freezing, something. I don't see any. Oh, there you go. An existing connection forcibly closed by the remote host. So I'm going to hit, um, let's just wait just a few more seconds. Two, three, four, and five. Let's see what happens. Connecting. Let's see if we get back in. And that's where the stopwatch kind of came up, came in handy. I know we started it, you know, as we were hitting it, but it just gives us a rough idea. You'll find far more graceful ways to measure the actual recovery time of this. And it says it's offline. So what I'm going to do now, um, as soon as I hit OK, it's going to completely f uh, go back to my desktop. And I'm going to reconnect to that station. Let's see if we can get back on it. There we are. We're back on it. So I'm going to hit stop. So it was a minute 28. I'm going to block that out. See, there you go. So no packet loss on the way out, which is very interesting, right? And again, you got to remember, it's a one second, 1,000 milliseconds. A lot can happen. And this was a minute 28 since we started. So again, not precise, but, you know, a minute and a half kind of gives you an idea of what it takes to come back and, and actually remotely connect the things. Why not, right? Now we're going to redo our commands. We've got our, our good old... But, you know, we'll start from the beginning. So show load balance status just to see what it's reporting now. Oh, I'm in configuration mode. Pardon me. Show load balance and status. There we go. And you can see 8 is active again. Awesome. 9 is in failover or standby mode. Awesome. From there, we'll do show IP route. Oops. Show IP route. And you can see 8 is in number one position again. If I want to confirm that, I'll do good old trace route. And you can see that, yes, indeed, it went out that port. So there you go. So I know it works. I can use that configuration confidently everywhere else. I know what commands we can type in for the help desk to find out if it's failed over or not. Uh, an added bonus is if this has a syslog message that we could actually look for or trigger on or get emailed about, we'll know what which port we're using. Awesome. Anyways, all in all, it was a successful test. Hope you learned something. Go try it out. Bye for now.